we are the last word, if you want to use that term, as the law is, as it applies to Georgia. And thus, it is a, the purpose to give consistency to the law of Georgia. And so, therefore, I think that's the importance. Uh, it governs the lower courts. They will know what the law is. The attorneys who practice in those courts hopefully will know what the law is. And then the citizens of Georgia and their commerce and other dealings with other citizens will know what the law of Georgia is. I go over to the clerk's office and I'm working late, okay, with my legal pad trying to find out what I need to be doing here as the Justice of the Supreme Court. Everybody leaves. I then go to leave and I cannot open the door to leave because the door is locked or somehow affixed to the frame. I pull and I pull and I pull. Now, remember, I don't know any phone numbers to call anybody, so I didn't know which number to call or anything. So I'm knocking on the door, hoping someone will come. Finally, I see a shadow outside of the glass door. It was kind of a clouded glass. And I'm knocking on the door, and I could see this hand kind of reaching up and waving and waving. I didn't have a clue what it was doing. I said, you know, can you help me? Can you help me? Just see this hand waving. I don't know, so I just decided to raise my hand and wave it, okay? It was a motion-activated door. And by waving my hand, I was able to unlock it. I wish somebody had told me that. Here I'm thinking I'm going to be spending my first day on the court, not only my first day on the court, but I'm going to spend a first night in the clerk's office. If uh, Justice Milton has, Milton has said I'm his mentor, I'm honored because I, I'm sure I've learned a lot more from Justice Melton in his short uh, time on this court than he's learned from me. He is a very bright man and a hardworking man and a man of great integrity and character, and it's a real privilege to serve with him. It is a tragedy when, when somebody loses a life. It just uh, wrong, has a life wrongfully taken. It affects so many people, and it affects society at large. But it is, uh, it is, so you have to make sure that the state and the defense get a fair trial. You must dot your I's. You must cross your T's. And then when we review them up here, uh, we have clerks who do that originally too. They review a record who simply review only death penalty cases. We have two clerks that do that. The clerk and the judge to whom that case is assigned looks at it. That judge looks at it closely. We then meet collectively and discuss that case closely. I, will, I can promise the people of the state of Georgia, uh, both the state side and the defense side, that these cases are looked at very carefully because we also know that later on down the road, most likely you'll be hearing the same case on a, on a habeas corpus saying that if there's a constitutional error, a motion to stay in execution. We review these matters again, so they're carefully, carefully reviewed and uh, because I think everybody understands the gravity of it for the state and the gravity of it for the defense and the gravity of it for the families of the victims and the gravity of it for the defendant and, and his or her family. My son and played football at the University of Georgia and, and uh, he was a kicker and, and a bragging father. He was a very successful kicker and played there for four years. So 
My wife and I went to all those football games when he played in high school. We do that. I grew up playing competitive sports. My daughter played soccer for Rhodes College uh, in Memphis, and we went to her soccer games. And I'm again a proud father, saying she was quite a quite a good soccer player. So we, we did a lot of that. I, I enjoy getting outside. My wife has a farm. She and her brother is a hunting preserve for quail. In, uh, in Alabama, I like to go over there and hunt quail and enjoy the outdoors. I, I, I very much enjoy a, a clean, crisp morning uh, when the dogs are working well, and it's just, it's just great to get out and, and be a part of this wonderful creation that we have. Hard work is the key. For the young people, young lawyers who say, I don't really have the skills or the talent of somebody else. I don't have the oratorical skills. Uh, maybe I don't even have the, uh, the, the intellectual capacity or the, the, the ability to read something complicated quickly and retain it. I say, look, you have, I bet, the ability to work hard. And that is an ability. Don't think of it as an ability, but use that ability. And I always said this, the attorneys who work the hardest usually come out on top in the long run.